on yet? Well, uh, it's been about uh, one week since we came to Germany, and I recognize most of your faces. And you're so close, I can almost touch most of you. But for those of you who don't know, we are Bad Religion. And you are Brayman.
Well, I think we've got about four or five more shows left in Germany. Until then, it seems like we're, uh, we're doing time here in Germany.
Thank you very much. Okay. We hear that a lot of you have been uh, buying the album Suffer here. So here's one off of it. You can, you can count along with us. How's that? That's, this one is called The Numbers Game. It's superficial progress, they call it liberation. Well, be it to Silicon, Big Brother seems to rule the nation. What nation under God is set above the rest? With my eye technology, we're never second best. Our specialty is infiltration. So, bang a bang, the whole HF victory, the domination. What are you doing except playing in bad religion? Um, well, when I'm at home, I, um, I'm working in music, but not, um, we don't do bad religion all the time. I have a, uh, I have a recording studio, and uh, I um, record records, and occasionally I produce records. Sometimes I just engineer them. And um, also, on the other half of the time, I have Epitaph Records. What's your job? I work on motorcycles for uh, the motion pictures. For like uh, when you see in the movie when the guy crashes on the bicycle, on the motorbike when the guy crashes, then when they cut on the scene, I go in and, and put the bike back together so they can ride it again. Um, I just graduated from school and as of now, I'm a part-time teacher at school, at um, college, and when I 
get back, I'm going to have to try to find uh, a real job. Uh, I play Nintendo and my television set. And you have Nintendo here, right, of course. You know, Super Mario Brothers, Nintendo. There are games that you play on your TV set. Oh. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a little, little computer game you hook up to your TV set. Super Mario Brothers, uh, Blades of Steel, it's a hockey game. So I sit at home and play games on my TV set, go to shows. I'm a graduate student at UCLA, and uh, I'm getting a master's degree and a PhD eventually. And um, I, the way I make a living, I guess, is uh, while I'm at the university, I teach undergraduate students uh, laboratory courses in biology. Is singing in that religion also kind of teaching for you? Yeah, in a sense, uh, I get the same benefits out of, uh, <clears throat> for instance, coming to Europe or anywhere in the world, actually, uh, w where I go, and people have heard Bad Religion and have looked at the lyrics, songs that I have written, uh, and actually taken them to thought. Um, that's a rewarding feeling. It's sort of the same kind of feeling I get uh, when I teach in a classroom and at the end of the semester a student tells me you know I really learned a lot from your teachings because people tell me I learned a lot from uh, your music too interestingly though <clears throat> so well so I get the same benefits or the same good feeling from uh, people who like bad religion and students who like my teaching but Interestingly, the, very rarely do the two ever mix. <laughs> I, I'll never be too old to play music because I enjoy music, all different types of music I play, and I enjoy listening. And Punk rock is sort of uh, what we as a band play the best. We play punk rock better than anything else. And if we can, as long as my heart and my throat keeps up, <laughs> I think there's no reason that I shouldn't be able to play this type of music. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the uh, crowds. You know, maybe the crowds will become more peaceful, more not. A, you know what happens with age. When you get older, you tend to slow down a little. But there will probably always be that new generation of younger uh, kids who are into it, who bring the spark and the fire. But I don't want to look to, I don't want to get to the point where I'm, where I start losing more hair and get fat and where it's just an embarrassment to be up on stage. I don't want to get to that point. And hopefully someone will be kind enough to tell me when I'm, I've reached that point. This one is called Along the Way. What is kind to the views, but it's there and it's happening on me along the way. As we go through the zone, we get out, we get out for all the fun partners, always waiting at the table all the way. Yeah. 
fourth grade in 1982. 82, a very good year. Got a lot of young people. This one is from an album we released called How Could Hell Be Any Worse? And this one started that one off. It's called We're Only Gonna Die From Our Own Arrogance. <laughs> Oh my, 
zusammengekommen ist, ist verletzt und er soll, seine Freunde sollen sich im Büro melden. Let's give her a big hand. I'm sorry, I don't know what she said, but something about beer, more beer or something. Brad, you have been an addict to crack. How do you think about hard drugs today? Well, I uh, I don't do it anymore. I think um, 
I think crack is probably the the worst poison that has ever been introduced uh, to to uh, to human beings. I mean, uh, I think it personally, I think it's worse than heroin because I I experimented with heroin uh, quite a bit and uh, alcohol and um, although I guess it depends on the individual. I will say that I'm not, I don't want it to sound that I, like I'm anti-drug because I'm not anti-drug. I happen to be a drug addict and when I take a drug I can't stop I, and, I, and um, or if I have a drink I continue drinking until I black out. So I had to stop uh, but um, I think that uh, part of that has to do with my, uh, perhaps my environment, but I think a, a great deal of it has to do with um, genetic physical causes. I think the central nervous system of a, of a drug addict and an alcoholic is different from the central nervous system of a non-drug addict alcoholic. And in fact, uh, medical studies have been done, they've done research on the spinal cord of um, drug addicts and alcoholics, and they find um, genetic differences between them so that there is some kind of inherited trait and um, so what I think is if you can handle it and you can use it drugs can be good they can be good to relax the atmosphere at a party LSD can be very good to expand your mind you know I, I love LSD I just don't I just and I don't think LSD is an addictive drug personally but I had I had tried to stop taking crack in the past and I tried to stop drinking in the past and I say, okay, I'll, I won't drink, I'll just smoke pot or I won't uh, take crack, I'll just drink. And I, whatever, th it, the one thing that I decided I would do, I did so much of it to compensate for not doing anything else uh, because that's how I was, that I had to stop everything, you know. But I, I think that there are people who can handle it and I think that for the people who can handle it, it's, it's okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just think that... Um, when it comes to the point where the uh, the pain of, of using the things are too great, then the pain of not using them, then you have to stop. Shame. I'm picking up German very slowly. Some people just don't have a propensity to learn languages. I'm one of them. And I apologize for it. This one is called You Are the Government.
Thank you. Well, with an introduction like that, how could we do anything but yesterday? Well, what song should we chant now? How about Forbidden Beat, Forbidden Beat, Forbidden Beat, Forbidden <laughs> This one is called Forbidden Beat.
Tanka. new song called Continuous Tuning. Yeah. Something like that. Uh,
But do you think it's more important in bad religion songs, the lyrics or the music? I think it's both. I think um, I read I read uh, an article with the guitar player from the Smith, Johnny Marr, and he said that uh, Morrissey's lyrics were very depressing and very morbid, and but his guitar was kind of happy. You know, it was kind of it was easy listening. It was good to listen to. And so with Bad Religion, some of the lyrics are, are really, they're messages and important messages, but if you had them going, duh, 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 and, and then maybe you wouldn't hear the message because the music wasn't easy listening. So the music is important because that's what you're listening to, and then the melody line with the lyrics over it is what you're saying. So I think they're, they're as important as each other. Oh, definitely the lyrics, because um, I would say we can't really play that well. well I could just speak for uh, myself, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the lyrics are the cornerstone of the band. Uh, I think the lyrics are the most important thing. The mu music is good, though, too. I think the, the words are more important. I think the, I think the um, music is the vehicle for uh, the words. And People uh, first hear the music, and then they'll listen to it again because they like the music. And then maybe the second time they listen to it, they'll notice there's some words there. And maybe the third time they listen to it, they'll try to figure out what the words are. And then, if they then if they want to, they can buy the record, and we have the words written down because it's so many long words in it that if you're just listening to it, you probably can't ever know what we're saying, even American kids or English kids. I always, ever since I've listened to punk rock, and really ever since I listened to all music, the lyrics have always been what I focus on. I always look at lyrics. I look at lyrics as being able to set apart a, a really good band from a mediocre band. Because uh, with rock music, it's very difficult to show differences in rock music, whether it's punk rock, heavy metal, anything. But one source of sophistication that you can get from a band is how do they think? Let's get back to supper, shall we? Here's a song called When. Thank you very much. Oh. We never thought the German crowds would be so nice to us. We just thought we'd say And I bet you never thought bad religion would ever get here. <laughs> well, we finally made it.
Thank you. This song is called, I Give You Me, I Give You Him, I Give You Him, I Give You Him, I Give You Nothing. talks about us and my pessimistic lines. So here we are again to experience better scolding and, and we're the only ones who can perceive that. But on the scene of beauty and the story that's unfolded, that's one that deserves praise and ritual. My pessimistic lines, get superstition lines, and a lot of angel lines. Thank you. We've got one more for you, and you know everyone in this room knows what's best for you.
see you next time. Tomorrow night in Frankfurt, Germany. Thank you. What's the meaning of the bad religion symbol? Uh, the meaning of the symbol? It's, uh, to me, it's just against any established set of rules. And the church just seems to be the, the easiest target. It has a, you know, the uh, Christian religion has a symbol and has a bunch of beliefs. You either, they say you either believe it or not, this is the way it is. And that's not the way the world works. So it was just an easy target to use to be uh, anti-establishment. Yeah, it, when it first came out, we all liked it. You know, we were f little kids, and we thought, yeah, this is a great idea. It'll piss people off. You know, when you're 15 years old, the first thing you think about is, how can I piss people off, you know? And it's very good. To, it's very easy to piss people off when you're 15, especially it's easy to piss off your parents and adults in general. But as you get a little older, <clears throat> um, or as I've gotten older, I've looked back on the symbol of bad religion as um, still having some meaning, but I wish it wasn't so offensive to other people because other people could benefit from the ideas, I think, that we've laid down. Um, <clears throat> for instance, what we look at it today as is uh, just a symbol. The cross is sort of the international symbol as this uh, parking symbol, the no parking, is everyone in the world can recognize it. Um, the cross we look at as an international symbol for religion. And it's not anti-Christian, it's not anti-Buddhist, it's not anti-Jewish, um, uh, anti it's not anti-anything. It simply is showing, it's our way of showing that we don't like to subscribe to dogmatic ways of life <clears throat> and dogmatic views of life and that religion in general is founded in um, in dogma and in restriction of ideas restriction of thought and it's these things that I feel are very bad about religion <clears throat> it's also very bad about nationalistic views it's very bad. It's something that mankind as a group is not going to benefit from. It's only something that mankind will, um, <clears throat> it's something that mankind will, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's something that will instill violence and it will instill fighting and it will instill non-cooperation of different groups of humans. Uh, uh, that was... Brett made that when uh, we were 15 years old. Brett came up with a piece of paper and said, look at this, and, and we all laughed and said, that's really funny, because uh, the concept of, of taking that symbol and putting the no thing on top of it was just, it seemed uh, shocking enough and good enough because it, uh, it, it represented Sometimes people took it, it that it represented that we were like Satan worshippers and that we were uh, not liking God, but it was more against in America is there's too much TV evangelism of, you know, send me monies and God will love you. And it's like, pfft. so that was at the time that was very popular when we were starting. So that was one of the one of the things that we still hate the most is is having to pay to be saved, it's like ridiculous. You don't need that. You don't need anybody to tell you that you have to pay money. So that was one of the reasons why we did that. And it's just, it's one of those things that it happened and we took it and maybe it was a really easy symbol for kids to spray paint and it's an easy symbol to put on a shirt. And so it became maybe bigger than what it really was in the beginning. It was just, a, it was something that we liked and we thought that it would piss our parents off or something, you know. And and then when the records came out, it just came everywhere. And so then everybody's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And whatever you want it to mean is, is you know, you, you decide. 
How's that for timing? Let's go back and start. A lot of people call this theme song. We just call it Bad Religion. See, my body is nothing to get hung about. I'm nobody trapped in a quarter round. Tomorrow night in Frankfurt. <laughs>